Hello, my name is Nathan Etherington. I'm the Program and Community Coordinator here at the Brant Historical Society. Archival Discoveries is a show where we open documents at the museum to learn and discover something new about Brantford's history. Today, we continue our Remembrance Day series exploring the letters of Ray Reeves during World War II. Okay, so let's see what type of documents we have here for Ray Reeves. I'm going to take these two out and make it easier. So, uh, we have general and letters from 1940, uh, letters from 1941, and they keep going uh, sequentially by year, 1943, 44, and 45. So we'll be able to put a little timetable together of everything that happened to him during World War II. Okay, so here's the first document in the envelope. And as you can see, it talks about uh, someone very different, this Vlasto person and his crew. And it mentions uh, later on that Sergeant Jack Reeves uh, hailed from Brantford. So, uh, and he was the radio operator. So now we know a little bit more about what he's doing with the military and, uh, and who he's working with. Okay, so here we have some other information about him. We have, first of all, a picture of him, which is uh, kind of nice. So we have an idea of who this guy is. And also included on this uh, is his obituary, uh, which states that he dies on September 20th, 1977. And it mentions in here uh, the other family members, obviously, and uh, it includes uh, uh, Mrs. Terrence Whiting, bracket Mary, of Linden, so, uh, and Maxwell of Brantford. So uh, even though he's out in Nova Scotia when he dies, um, he, he clearly was from here and had family here. So one of the only letters that we have really from 1940 is this one written in December. And uh, you can see he's already out in Manitoba at this time. Um, and uh, it mentions that it is uh, down to 38 degrees below zero. And it says, in regards to sending me the Saturday issue of the Expositor, I would like it very much. So uh, uh, obviously he's missing home and he's probably referred to in the Expositor as one of the local military men that's serving. Okay, so now we've moved forward into 1941, and there's quite a few letters and quite a bit happening this year. So I decided to sort them and organize them all and kind of make this kind of rough finding aid to give you a kind of sense of where he is and what's happening throughout the year. So uh, as mentioned at the end of last year, he's in Brandon, and then very quickly in the new year, he goes to High River, Alberta. And in High River, Alberta, they do one type of training course there. Then they move to Calgary. And in Calgary, he also does a wireless training course. And then uh, we see at the end of June, they go into July. And he's writing fairly regularly up until then, like every, every week or two. And then uh, in July... He all of a sudden shows up in Fingal, Ontario, which is outside of St. Thomas. So uh, for that, we have this letter here uh, where he writes about uh, from, from that training uh, facility there. And he mentions uh, that he's expecting to travel for three days. Um, this is the closest I was to Brantford when uh, the uh, train passed through. So uh, you can see he's, he's clearly on his way somewhere. And as it turns out, he heads to Nova Scotia. And then uh, farther from Nova Scotia, they uh, leave uh, shortly after uh, September 25th. And then they're in England. And uh, we don't know where they are in England. Um, sometimes the post stamps have like a uh, location, but... Often he just writes his letters and they're just, uh, uh, says England. And then we have this very specific letter here on December 3rd. And on December 3rd, he, he writes specifically about that. And he says, I'm very sorry. I cannot tell you 
uh, where I am stationed. So you will have to use the address that I gave you. So soldiers were not allowed to disclose their location um, during the war to their families. In fact, in a lot of these uh, letters, we see that they have been opened by someone doing surveillance to make sure that secrets aren't getting out to the enemy, so to speak. Okay, so now we'll go into the next year, into 1942, and see where he's heading. So he uh, is in England until the end of the spring. And then you can see April 24th, he shows up in Cairo in the Middle East. So here's a letter in which he describes his time in Cairo as a strange city with its mosques and strange oriental architecture, uh, standing out in contrast to the architecture of the Western world. From there, he's stationed uh, in the Middle East for uh, the summer months. And then uh, in September, he shows up in India. So in this letter that he first writes when he gets to India, he notes, I think that I shall like India much better than Egypt. It is much nicer scenery and the country is very green with luxurious growth and nice trees. In 1943, we see a very different trend in letters. There's a kind of a lot less and they're spaced out between or chunked in uh, like intense group periods. So April is pretty active uh, as well. There's a period there towards the uh, like middle of the summer. And then uh, again in fall, there's another kind of little period there. So uh, there's no location noted for these. And that's because he's always in India the entire year. Okay, so here's a letter received from the Royal Canadian Air Force on April 8th um, here in Brantford by his father, John Reeves. And it's it sent to him to notify him about uh, injuries. So he was slightly injured on active service, receiving uh, abrasions to his hand as a result of air operations in India on March 25th, 1943. Uh, fortunately, his injuries are not serious. So uh, it's good. He's not seriously injured, but uh, there's nothing mentioned in any of the letters back home about this injury, what it is, or anything like that. In a lot of the letters, he writes and asks for more cigarettes. And usually in the letters as well, he acknowledges, I received, you know, 100 cigarettes from, from this person. I received you know, 50 from this family member. So they're all kind of chipping in and kind of supplying him with chocolates too, of course. So uh, this one, he's actually writing to employees at Slingsby's. So this is where we believe he worked before the war. And uh, he said, I received two parcels of a, a thousand cigarettes from you and was very glad to have received them. So he's actually kind of checking back in with his fellow workers back home in Brantford from India. Here we have uh, the list of letters from 1944, and you can see there's uh, considerably less, and there's some periods where he just stops writing completely. So uh, one of the earliest letters is uh, February 1st, and in it he's writing back to send messages back home to uh, Mary, his sister, and he mentions, by the time you receive this letter, you will have passed your birthday. So I'm wishing you a very happy birthday. So uh, things that you still need to do when you're fighting in the middle of a war. Um, it also, this is a letter from July, and he's talking about what's happening uh, outside of India. So he notes, it was certainly great news when the second front started. I think that European war will be over by the new year. I sincerely hope so. So uh, he's, he's uh, hoping that he's able to come home soon. And then as well, we see this little like voucher kind of thing from 1944 in which he's taking out a temporary membership at, uh, at the Calcutta Swimming Club. So obviously he's doing something and he's got a considerable amount of time on his hands at the end of September. In 1945, now, uh, we're getting 
close to the end of the war. So he's now left India, and you can see here uh, on January 10th, he uh, sends a telegram to let uh, Mary know that he's arrived safe in England. So uh, he's left India, and uh, later on, in on March 3rd, he sends another telegram uh, to Brantford, saying that he's arrived safely today, and he'll be home soon. So we learned quite a bit of information this week about Ray Reeves, a World War II soldier from Brantford. We learned about his training that he went uh, through out west in Manitoba and Alberta. We then learned about him going overseas to England, being stationed there for a while, then getting deployed to Egypt and Cairo before heading on to India and being stationed there for the remainder of the war. In early 1945, he goes back to England before arriving in New York City in March and then on his way back to Brantford. So join us next week for Archival Discoveries when we continue our Remembrance series with World War I letters from the Betts Brothers. <laughs>